what can't the Valve Steam Deck do? I hear that a lot, and I mean, I think a big part of that is the hype, the enjoyment people are having with the device. There are a lot of Steam Deck fans out there, and usually fans get extremely excited for the thing that they're a fan of. I've been a fan and extremely excited of the Steam Deck, but in reality, there is a lot that the deck can't do. But for what it is and can do, it's fairly impressive. I mean, if you paid for the $400 64GB version of the deck, I feel like you got the best deal out of all of us. It's the same specs, just less storage, and at $400, you can upgrade to storage for a lot cheaper than the two larger capacity models. Another thing to consider is at this price that it's at, it's very difficult to find a comparable PC priced similarly specs wise, be it a mini PC, desktop or laptop. Valve themselves earlier this year told their development community if they were still waiting on a development kit or were unable to get one, that a mini forum, mini PC, that's on Amazon that costs $660 would be comparable to testing on the Steam Deck. Even though the deck does have a better GPU and more memory bandwidth, this is what they recommended. So I really think for what you're getting here at $400, it's a damn good deal. Now, I remember when I was first doing videos talking about the Steam Deck prior to launch, how I was more excited about the idea of having my Steam library available and handheld than I was about emulation. And that has kind of changed since I started messing around with EmuDeck. I've been emulating retro consoles quite a bit more than playing my Steam games as of late. I really have been enjoying this device more and more as I unlock its potential via emulation and getting it docked up to a larger screen. I like using it docked mainly for recording videos to share with you guys, but also, as I've pointed out previously, having it docked makes it a lot easier getting things set up for emulation and doing some tinkering with settings and whatnot, so it's a lot more convenient doing certain things. Now, with EmuDeck, it has been fairly easy getting everything going, but I have been noticing some things that are worth pointing out that may help some people fix issues or just give people a better idea of what to expect. I've tested a few consoles and videos recently, but lately I've been focusing on playing Dreamcast, so this is that video. Now, the default emulator that is installed with EmuDeck for Dreamcast is Flycast, so that's what all this footage is captured emulating from the deck with is Flycast, just so you know, that's what we're looking at here. Now, when I first booted up a Dreamcast game, I immediately noticed some issues. So let's talk about them and how to fix them and you know, just in case if you run into these problems and just kind of overall showcase the performance you can expect here as well. So the default emulator, it had widescreen hacks on. I was like, what's going on? So this allows you to see the stages or whatever 3D elements that you would normally not see that was outside of the 4-3 aspect ratio. This does seem a little glitchy depending on the game you're playing. Uh, you may see some geometry pop in or textures vanishing and reappearing. You know, there, there's a few games that are confirmed to work with widescreen hacks without issues, but most other games you will find those problems I just mentioned. So if for you this option is on by default as well, and you notice those glitches and the screen is in widescreen mode, uh, it's easy to turn it off, to turn off widescreen hacks in RetroArch via the quick menu. So you go to the options, then emulation hacks, and turn off the hack. This will allow games to display in their normal aspect ratio without adding any additional viewing area to the screen that you normally wouldn't see. To note, I believe the internal resolution for me was defaulted to 960 by 720, and we will be touching on this in a moment, the resolution. Now also my video scaling option for aspect ratio was set to core provided just so you know. So this is how I typically like to play Dreamcast games in their original aspect ratio. But there is another option if you want that extra space to be filled on the screen without the 3D assets of the game getting stretched out. Now back in that same emulation hacks menu, you may have noticed another widescreen option called widescreen cheats. Now there are a bunch of Dreamcast games that have cheats that will do a similar thing as the widescreen hack, but a lot of times with way better results. 
If a game has this cheat available, you will get that widescreen view with the area of the game showing what you normally wouldn't see without any glitches. Now, there, there may be a handful that do have glitches, but every single one of them I've tested, there wasn't. Uh, I'll put information out there so you can see the list of what works, what doesn't work. So the trade-off with this, though, using uh, the widescreen cheats, is that the 2D assets like health bars and other UI elements will be stretched out. Now, it really doesn't look bad in my opinion. The 3D assets in the game, like character models and whatnot, they don't get stretched out. So depending on the game that I'm playing, I'm fine with using widescreen cheats versus, you know, the standard 4-3 aspect ratio. It looks really good for a lot of games. Now, there's also a small handful of games for the Dreamcast that actually have native 16.9 support. Games like Arrow Wings, Rayman 2, Tokyo Extreme Racing 2, and Toy Commander all allow this. Plus, there's another eight games in the library that have this feature. Now, if you want to play these games that support it, you need to set the in-game display options to 16.9 without any of these hacks being enabled and go to RetroArch Settings, Video Options, then Scaling, and change it to 16.9. And if you're playing a game that supports it, it's going to look pretty good, in my opinion. Now, remember how I mentioned the, the screen resolution earlier, how what mine was set to default. And a lot of times I think people will think, hey, the more resolution, the better, go big or go home type of thing. And I really don't have an argument concerning this, but for sure, some consoles may benefit keeping the resolution to the original or even a multiple of the original resolution, uh, especially if you wanna use scan lines and whatnot. But with the Dreamcast, I noticed another problem. A, a game that I test all the time, and I wanted to test here today, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Almost every device that I've tested the game on, it's playable but has weird graphics glitches. So when I saw the same exact problem on the Steam Deck, it made me wonder. So I had to dig into it, and I found that setting the internal resolution to 640 by 480 fixed it. No more glitches. This is the original Dreamcast resolution, so if you find a game that plays but has some weird graphics issues, maybe try changing the resolution back to 480p. Might fix it for you. Another thing you may run into that I had an issue with was I had what I thought were US ROMs, right? I boot the game up and it's in Japanese, Japanese text, but it was the US ROM. When I play it on the actual Dreamcast through a GDM you it worked just fine. Now, if you go back to that quick menu in RetroArch, go to options, and then from options, you go to your system settings, you could change the region and the language. Some games may have multiple versions built into them, and by changing the region and language within the you know options here, you could fix that. There's tons of other options you can mess around with as well. Uh, one thing you may want to look at is alpha sorting, as I'm kind of showing. Uh, per pixel, accurate but slowest typically seems to work fine to fix some issues with games. But there you go. So there you go. A, a handful of, I guess you would call them tips and tricks with emulating the Dreamcast on the Steam Deck. Originally, this video was meant to be a showcase of how well the Dreamcast performs on the deck, but I think trying to showcase solutions to possible problems you may run into while also showcasing performance is of quite a bit more value to people. I really hope this helped some of you guys out there. You know, it seems like a lot of times the options we get for emulation wind up getting presented or having the perception of being very simple, like plug and play, no tinkering. And while that can be the case sometimes, it's not always the reality. So in this video, I just wanted to try to make things easier for some of you guys out there. Hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, that's okay. Really do appreciate every single one of you guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them down below. Try to help you out the best I can. And the community kind of, you know, chimes in on things as well. They got a lot of uh, helpful, you know, tips as well in the uh, comment section. So take a look. Thank you guys. Catch you on the next one. Bye.